is mostly a 25 hour race. Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. Joining me on the whiteboard is Ricardo Badaloni. He is the president and chief executive officer at Diablo Technologies. Thank you for having me. So, boy, it's been a busy few weeks for you guys, right? I mean, uh, came out of the market, and uh, we had uh, John Scaramuzzo from SanDisk uh, on, on the whiteboard a few days ago, and a very interesting and compelling technology. Uh, and I thought we'd bring you guys in and really deep dive on um, what you guys are doing. Uh, and, you know, what John really talked about that was interesting to me is, you know, we've seen an evolution with flash storage, right? The first thing we did is we had drive form factor SSDs. We installed those into the uh, system, and it, it helped because they were, you know, you know low-latent uh, devices, but they basically exposed problems in the I.O. chain, right? And so all of a sudden we had latency where we didn't know we had latency. Uh, and then secondly, uh, then we moved to PCIe SSDs, right? And then that got rid of this latency, but then all of a sudden they exposed latency in the I.O. bus because obviously other things are competing for that I.O. channel like network interface cards, things like that. And then finally, uh, you know, what John talked about is what you guys are doing is, is leveraging the memory channel to uh, access Flash. Uh, why don't you take us through that detail and explain to me how you're doing that? The memory channel in general gives us, you know, numerous uh, advantages. Uh, you know, the the parallelism and the bandwidth are one element. Uh, but what we also did with what we call memory channel storage, which is the you know the key piece that we combine with Smart's Guardian technology to make the ultra dim product. Right. Um, we bring concepts of distributed systems to bear, and parallelism is very powerful and. You know, I'll talk a little bit about how that works today. Okay, let's okay. do that. So here you've got, um, you know, a typical, you know, x86 type configuration where you have multiple cores, CPU cores. Um, you know, they are essentially um, accessing an 8x or, you know, eight concurrent parallel coherent memory channels. So any of these cores can basically access any of these memory channels, you know, from a bandwidth or content perspective. And then they've got, of course, the system memory, which is an array of memory modules that make up the system memory. Okay. So what MCS is, is it actually sits in the memory subsystem. And you can view it as being attached in a distributed manner to each of these channels alongside the RAM. Okay, and we're going to call this MCS. And, and just for the viewers, what does MCS stand for? Memory channel storage. Okay. Okay. So this is made up of a physical layer that's designed with chips that Diablo have developed. Okay. Uh, and, you know, there's a software layer that's running, you know, on the host. Okay. And what that software layer does is it essentially moves data from the system memory piece of it into the MCS piece and back, right? And we call this the persistence layer. Okay. And this is essentially a, a chip that sits yeah, in, it's, in... It's actually a series of chips Okay. that in general there's one per me physical memory channel. Okay. Okay, and so if you think of the memory subsystem, there are modules that are on every memory channel in parallel. Right. And here we have a series of devices that are on the ultra dim product. Okay. And the ultra dim product, there is a physical product in every channel okay. of, the, of the CPU. And the idea is you want to have a, a small unit of scale, right? One or two or 400 gigabyte. Mm -hmm. And then you want to scale as many of those up as possible to hit your capacity performance point. Okay. Okay. I'm just drawing one box, but th this is actually made up of several devices in parallel. Okay. Just like the memory subsystem. Okay, fair. Now, SanDisk's piece of it centers around flash management, right, which is below what we call the persistence layer, and it's over here. So we'll just call that the flash translation layer. Okay. And then you've got the actual media down here, which is the flash. Now, what I talked about previously was, you know, the memory interface compared to using PCIe or SATA or SAS. And as you can see, the memory interface piece of it is here. Mm -hmm. But there's also other bottlenecks in the system that are 
infinitely more important. And I would argue that you know the bandwidth of one memory channel compared to one PCIe channel is the comparison that people will typically make. Okay. But that isn't the full story. In fact, it's it's a very small, almost irrelevant fraction of the story. Okay. Right. The way you want to look at this is that you know to get the flash to behave and perform, you have to actually add a flash translation layer that has a lot of CPU power. Okay. And it turns out what we do is you know through the parallelism we actually build a flash translation layer with SanDisk components and we distribute them in the memory subsystem. And so what you what you have here is distributed flash translation. Okay. Okay, that has very, very high MIPS capabilities in the order of gigahertz. Now, to clarify, the, the flash translation layer, that's uh, your guys' IP or is that uh, this is SanDisk? all SanDisk's Guardian technology. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah. We provide MCS and then SanDisk provides the flash translation layer and the flash. Great, okay. Now, the part that we brought to it is that MCS allows you to break SanDisk's IP into little pieces and distribute it across all of the memory channels in parallel. Okay, great. Okay. The last piece of it is the number of channels that the flash can be used to access from. Okay. Okay, and it turns out that by going through a parallel architecture, you also have over here either 128 or 256 parallel channels. Okay, now this turns out to be, you know, five to ten times more channels than a typical monolithic device that's here. Right. Now why and it's not competing with all kinds of other network interface cards and things like they're that. They're dedicated right? channels. Right. Clearly, they're dedicated to the flash. Right. And the goal here is not to have more flash per channel, which you typically get in some of these devices because you're trying to increase the density. So you have a limited number of flash channels, mm -hmm. you have more flash die per right. channel, right. and you get contention. Sure. Right? The goal of this architecture is to actually have, ideally, every die uniquely on its own channel in an ideal world. Okay. The flash translation layer managing a series of those, but in a highly distributed fashion. Okay. And then the memory channel storage layer, which is the persistence layer, essentially giving you the bandwidth of all eight memory channels in parallel. Okay. Okay. Now, to illustrate how this becomes an advantage, I'll actually draw a transaction, a basic okay. transaction for you. So, let's say we wanted to do a 64 kilobyte write. Okay. Right, so a database application builds a 64K page in the system memory, and it's located somewhere here. Okay. So the application is running on one of these cores, and it says, OK, I've built this buffer. I want to write it to the flash. Mm -hmm. So at that point, our software driver is going to read this in, but then write it in parallel chunks using all eight memory channels in parallel. Okay. So do, okay. does it break it from 64 into That's eight correct. chunks? That's correct. Okay. Right, so it'll write 8K chunks across 80 gigabyte per second worth of throughput through eight memory channels. Now keep in mind that I'm drawing it going back to the core, but in actual fact, this data never leaves the memory controller. Okay. Okay, so it stays in the memory controller. Now at that point, in the MCS, this is the persistence layer. So mm -hmm. each of the, the devices will get that data, check data integrity on it, and then acknowledge back to the software that the write is complete. Okay. And then the software is also part of your IP. The as software well. is our IP. Right, okay. Now notice that that write, we didn't even talk about flash, right? right? It's all happening in the persistence layer, and that's why it's so fast. Okay. And that's why the parallelism matters because it's the data is read once, but it's actually read across eight parallel memory channels. Gotcha. Okay, which is of course very fast. Sure. Now at that point, the FTL is going to process those eight writes across a distributed set of embedded processors mm -hmm. individually. Okay. 
Okay, and so this gives you throughput, right? Right, because keep in mind, we don't want to write just one. We want to write one very fast, and then we want to be ready to write the next one. Okay, right, okay? absolutely, sure. And so that's called throughput, right. right? So the MCS layer gives you the latency aspect. The memory subsystem gives you the bandwidth. Mm -hmm. The distributed FTL and all the channels give you the throughput, right? Which is a big, a big pipe, which in the end we want to get two to four gigabyte per second. Right. And that allows us to supplant in DRAM because of all this uh, bandwidth and throughput. Yeah, in general, when you're talking about persisting through the I.O. subsystem, if you compare this architecture to a RAM disk, mm -hmm. it will be on par in performance and very close in, um, in throughput. Okay, great. Okay. Well, uh, Ricardo, thanks very much for uh, joining us today on the, on the whiteboard and giving us that uh, deep dive on the technology. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. This is George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland.